all right everybody how's it going it is tuesday september 27 2022 and of course we just finished with week three of the nfl so it's about time we jump into week four and get our picks out for the week uh we kind of had a bad week three uh it's kind of like that early season crap shoot thing that's going on where you know you can pick a bunch of games and kind of have an idea of what's going to happen but it's kind of feels lucky and like you get a lot of one score games wrong early in the season and that's kind of how i'm feeling i went seven and nine last week good for 20 27 and one on the whole season so not exactly a great start to the regular season, but not one that you can't climb out of and one that isn't insurmountable. Excuse me, just drink a big like a big gulp of pop and that messed me up. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's basically week four. It wasn't the greatest week. We don't have any bye weeks yet. Uh, we got one game in London. Uh, that's the Vikings and the Saints. Uh, so that so, you know, we got some fun games to go over this week. And uh, yeah, we'll get into that in just a second. Make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Uh, make sure you also leave your picks down below. I love to go over people's picks and see how you're doing on the season. Uh, we go like head to head on the week and uh, on the season overall. So, you know, leave a like, make sure you leave your comments down there if you enjoyed the video and all that and you know i like to like, like to talk to the people even if you think my picks suck and i'm not that good at it which i have been pretty bad so far this year be sure to leave your thoughts down below and i'll return the return the comment uh so anyway uh let's jump right into the week uh we got thursday yeah sorry sorry with the youtube stuff at the beginning it just kind of helps and blah 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 um you know we don't do it at the end now so anyway uh let's jump into the games we have uh of course all the lines are from fanduel.com we kind of just uh put them in here at the end of like when i make my picks i'm like all right let's include the lines so people have something to kind of reference and uh you know people like to have those in there so people know who's the favorite and yada 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 if you do gamble just do it responsibly i don't personally like to because i don't like to lose money that way uh and i'd be losing money this year i'd be upset so the Miami Dolphins take on the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are three and a half point favorites with an over under of 47 and a half. Kind of disrespectful to the uh, start for the Dolphins. They've had quite the good run this year. They beat the Ravens. They beat the Patriots. Um, they've beaten the Bills. So, I mean, it's not like the Dolphins have played like this, like weird uh, plethora of like bad teams. They've played a pretty good defense in the Patriots, a pretty good team in the Ravens and uh, a really good team in the Bills. And they've won all three games pretty handily. Well, not really against the um against the uh bills but they were able to win that game in kind of a comeback fashion and hold off the bills from coming back so that's rather impressive that's a good start to the season for the dolphins i'm surprised that they're not favored to win a game uh win this game against a Bengals team that has looked look they look bad they looked bad and then they kind of look good toward the end versus the Dol uh versus the uh cowboys and then they looked uh good against you know the jets it's like wow that's uh that's a reason to put a favor on a team hold on <clears throat> While I do think Cincinnati's bad start to the season was a little overhyped and a little overblown because the Bengals needed a little time to get like used to playing together again, to get the rust knocked off because they didn't really have much of a preseason together due to Burrow's appendectomy, you know, getting the appendix out because it burst right before camp started. So, you know, the Bengals are going to get better and be a better team, but I think running into the Dolphins right now who have just played against like three really good teams, uh, usually the Patriots are a good team, um, and have beaten them, and they kind of beat them and their offenses looked really good their defenses looked really really good except for against the ravens but they held them off in the second half so you kind of have to look at this and go i don't really know why the Bengals are favored it must be a home thing and short week home team and they're just going hey maybe these guys will win i'm not really certain as to why the Bengals are favored but i'm gonna go with the dolphins here i guess in an upset even though this doesn't feel like an upset 31 27 the Dolphins have just looked way more impressive than the Bengals this year. Until the Bengals can actually like beat a real team that isn't the Jets, then, you know, sayonara on that one. Anyway, let's go into the 1 p.m. games uh, at, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern or 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard, I guess. 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard. Um, it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the New Orleans Saints. As we discussed in the opening, this is the uh, this is one of the first um, European games. I think it's over in I don't I think it's in London. I don't think it's in like Germany and stuff. It could be in Germany. I could be wrong, um, but I think it's in Europe. I know that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, anyway, the Vikings come in uh, two and one. The Saints come in one and two. By the way, those are the games they put up there. The Vikings won their last game, and the Saints um, were able to go ahead and lose their last game versus the Panthers. So that's something to watch with the health of that team kind of deteriorating. And that's kind of that kind of leads into what I'm thinking for this game uh, regarding the Saints. It's like yeah, they're they're a decent team and a well put together roster, but right now they're dealing with so many random injuries. It's kind of hard to, especially to like Jameis Winston. I think Kamara 
is in and out with injury. Uh, Michael Thomas is banged up. So it's like they have a like those are the like three best offensive pieces all banged up or dealing with some kind of injury going up against the Vikings team that at this is kind of prime time, but not really. It's nine in the morning. So this is going to be supercharged Kirk Cousins because I mean, again, the earlier he plays, the better he plays against a bad team. Uh, like this is just prime Kirk Cousins territory. 9:30 a.m. I don't think anybody else on planet Earth is better to win a football game that starts at 9:30 a.m. Eastern Standard. I know it's a different time over in London, but his brain works in Eastern Standard Time, I would imagine. So e- even if it works in uh, Central Time, because he, you know, the Minnesota thing, it's only 10:30 to him. There's nothing better than Kirk Cousins before one, before 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, on a prime time time. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like the Vikings are just a better team and the Saints right now. If the Saints were healthier, I might pick the Saints to kind of win this game and kind of like a surprise win. But again, the Saints are dealing with way too many injuries to pick them. And, you know, with, with the Vikings, they're, they had that good. Again, they're they're really good in these slots. Um, here's a game that t- probably doesn't need that much uh, breakdown. The Cleveland Browns take on the Atlanta Falcons. I don't think the Browns are going to be with Miles Garrett this week after his bad car accident. He seems to be okay, which is great news, uh, but I don't know if he's going to be able to play. The Browns do come in off a 29-17 uh, win against the Steelers, and the Falcons come in off a 27-23 win versus the Seahawks. See, I'm kind of like a Falcons expert. I kind of know this team for some reason. Again, the Browns are favored, but no one's really surprised. I'm kind of surprised that the favorite is so low it must be because of the miles garrett news that they're not really sure how to like figure this game out but regarding the browns they've looked really good on offense in all of their games that they've played in even the game against the jets they look good in but they had this like weird like last second collapse against them and it was the craziest thing i've ever seen in football um and probably most people have never seen anything as crazy as that in football so um the browns are probably a lot better than whatever the hell happened against the jets they've been playing great football uh this is an easy pick really uh the falcons despite winning against the seahawks almost blew that game late it was it was a very competitive game against a bad Seahawks team and when you're playing in competitive games against Seattle I don't think a team like Cleveland who is like a probable playoff team even with Jacoby Brissett as the starter is even in the same ballpark like I I, Cleveland without Miles Garrett is probably still going to do bad things to this Falcons team um, who doesn't have the best offensive line their their quarterback situation isn't the greatest and this is a pretty good Brown secondary complete mismatch Um, if Atlanta does win it would be one of the bigger upsets of the weekend in my opinion give me the Browns in that one pretty easily here's a probable game of the week the Bills are going to be in a lot of game of the weeks Uh, the Buffalo Bills take on the Baltimore Ravens both teams are two and one Uh, the Ravens come in off a win uh, against the Patriots 37 to 26 the Bills coming off a tough loss 21 19 to the Dolphins Uh, the Bills are three and a half point favorites with an over under a 51 and a half um so when I look at the Bills, I, I see a complete offense, right? Their offense is really, really good. They're, if not great. So we have that. That's not really put into question in this game. I think they're going to be able to score and keep up with each other. Um, mainly because the Ravens have been giving up a lot of points to even like the Patriots who put up 26. It's like, yeah, that's that's whatever. But it's like, if it wasn't for Mac Jones having kind of a bad day and throwing three picks, they could have scored a whole hell of a lot more points too. Um, this game could have been a really like shootout against the Patriots, a shootout against the Dolphins and the only game in that the uh, Ravens defense has shown any kind of life I believe was against the Jets um so so we kind of know that they're going to give up points to the Bills one of the things I'm questioning about the Bills as we go forward how are they going to look without Trey White Micah Hyde and how long is Jordan Poyer out now it seemed like last week they were able to contain the Dolphins a little bit with the pass rush but the Ravens have a different kind of story with a young secondary and a young kind of like beat up secondary with that the Bills will have in this it's kind of like how are they going to respond to Rashad Bateman Devin DuVernay and Mark Andrews with Lamar Jackson being able to run and J.K. Dobbins being back the Patriots had absolutely almost no answer for that after a while um and I and again and they have a very good like trained like like very experienced secondary whereas the bills outside of like one guy right now their secondary is depleted at this point um again i don't know if uh, jordan poyer's playing i don't know if trey white's going to be available quite yet and i honestly don't and micah hides out for the season so i have to look at this game and go i don't know if the bills 
when I look at everything, I'm like, all right, these are pretty similar offenses. They're very, very, very good offenses. They're both usually very good defenses that have, uh, um, and the Bills have played very good defense all season. But I'm starting to wonder: is this Ravens offense something that they haven't really seen before? Because this is a f- the Ravens feel different than they usually do on offense. And I'm like, man, maybe there's just that small gap there where the Ravens have a slight edge with defense where they can make a stop. Whereas when I look at the uh, Bills defense, it's been very good with the pass rush, but they haven't really seen Lamar yet. And I don't really know what happens when Lamar gets loose. Does that secondary suddenly break down and you have Duvernay or you have Bateman just or, or Andrews just wide open down the middle of the field? And that could be a big problem. That's a fast football team. Um so yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the Ravens in this one, in what should be a really good game. But again, uh, this was this is one of the tough ones. All right, here's an easy game: the Dallas Cowboys take on the Washington Commanders. Cowboys are three and a half point favorites with an over under of 42 and a half. Um, yeah, this is a pretty whatever game. Uh, the Cowboys coming off a 23 to 16 win with Cooper Rush, and uh, the Commanders are seemingly getting worse each week with a 24 to eight loss to the Eagles. Uh, Cowboys defense is really good. I mean, that's a long story short. Uh, their offense is doing what it has to do to get the job done. It's not really turning the ball over, so that's a big key. Uh, the commanders, I just, I don't know. Uh, they're just not very good. I'm going to go with the Cowboys in this one specifically because I think the Dallas defense overwhelms that really bad Washington commanders offensive line and keeps them kind of unable to get any rhythm going on offense. And it's just kind of a. It's like the Cowboys' last few games where they just kind of stay in the game, kind of have weird leads, and ugh, I don't know. Cowboys are boring right now. Anyway, this will be a fun game, kind of, not really. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks take on the Detroit Lions. The Lions are five-point favorites with an over-under of 50. Um, the Seahawks come in off a 27-23 to loss versus the Falcons, and the Lions come, off, come in off a heartbreaking loss to the Minnesota Vikings, a game they pretty much led the whole time, and then they blew it in the last like minute. Uh, and the and the Vikings won 28-24. So I think the Lions are, be, are you know they'll be back home this week, going to be out for revenge against the Sea. Uh, you know just kind of like to avenge their name and make sure make good on that loss from last week. Um, their defense should be swarming on this uh, kind of bad Seattle Seahawks offensive line. Just kind of an in general bad Seattle offense. Uh, Detroit should be able to score on this kind of bad Seahawks defense. I mean, it's as simple as that, really. Detroit's just a better team than Seattle. There's not much really analysis that needs to go into this. The only way they could win is if Detroit has a really bad game and uh, Pete Carroll outcoaches Dan Campbell, which I, you know, the outcoaching Dan Campbell might happen anyway, but I just, Detroit, I mean, Minnesota is just a tough game for the Lions. It is what it is. Um, Oh, boy. Ooh, another fun one. Los Angeles Chargers take on. That's why I took so long on the better games, by the way. The Los Angeles, because sometimes you run into some bad ones in a row. Uh, Los Angeles Chargers take on the Houston Texans. <coughs> anyway, uh, the the Chargers are one and two off a. Uh, I was coughing on purpose to set this up off a. You see. <laughs> I'm just going to make fun of the Chargers. I have the Chargers beating the Texans 24 to 14. Chargers are favored. They should win this game. Unless we see the same Chargers that showed up against the uh, mighty, mighty Jacksonville Jaguars. I can't, I'm can't. i just stunned that they the Chargers lost 38 to 10 to uh, Jacksonville. It seems like if they would have just sat Herbert and played the backup, they probably would have won that game. But I don't know. I'm not an expert or anything. <laughs> it's just like, what are the Chargers doing? But hey, I don't know. They should be able to beat the Texans. Uh, They're a better team than that. So you'd hope that they can win that game. Anyway, here's a really good game, actually. That was kind of hard to pick. Uh, It's the Tennessee Titans taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Colts coming off a surprise win versus the Chiefs. Even though it's not really a surprise, we all should have picked them. They seem to just have the number of... Like, Frank Reich just seems to have Andy Reid's number and seems to know how to deal with that uh, whole situation better than, like, any coach in the NFL, it feels like. Uh, They seem to always beat the... it's like always like this. They almost always beat the Chiefs or always beat the Chiefs. It's a really weird uh, thing with these Colts. Um, and then you have the Tennessee Titans. They had a they won they finally won their game and they beat the Raiders twenty four to twenty two. Held them off too. There was a that was almost blown game. Uh, Colts are favored by three with an over under of forty three. This game I went back and forth on for like ten minutes trying to figure out who I thought would win. I literally still don't feel good about this pick. Um, 
I ha I went to recent history basically to pick this because neither team is playing at where you could be like, oh, they're a better team right now. It's like, well, no, neither team is winning very well. They they both barely squeaked out wins against kind of like teams that aren't playing as good. Like the the more impressive win was the Colts over the Chiefs. I will say because the Chiefs have been playing decent football this year, but but it's a team they always beat. So it's one of them like, oh, it's it's kind of like 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 when the Packers beat the Bears like what can you surmise from that that the Packers always beat the Bears the Colts always play good versus the Chiefs it's just one of them like weird things so I had to go to the history of this and the Titans have been just beating the Colts it seems like Mike Vrabel might have uh Frank Reich's number so I'm kind of just going off that when these two teams feel very close in skill right now and the way that they're playing which they do uh you kind of just got to go to recent history and kind of look down and be like oh, all right then I'm gonna go with the Titans in this one uh so give me the Titans 24 uh 20 in what should be a good game they usually always play great games uh who gives a shit uh the two most surprised two and one teams in all of football the Chicago Bears take on the New York Giants uh the Giants are three point favorites with an over under a 39 uh bears coming off a 23 20 uh game versus the texans they won and the uh giants of course took their first loss of the season uh they'll pop they'll probably be taking their second their offense isn't very good chicago seems to have a pretty good defense uh it's a, yeah that's that's all i got if they play daniel jones they'll probably lose uh yeah i uh, here's the next game this this will actually be a halfway decent game maybe depending on if the jaguars are real or they're just like getting lucky on like weird stuff maybe they're the lucky team this year i have no idea maybe they're good i don't really know what the jaguars are this game will tell us a lot even if they lose if they can keep it close versus the eagles then maybe the jaguars are actually somebody you gotta watch out for eagles are six and a half point favorites with an over under of 48 and a half three and zero eagles they're fresh off a of beating of the commanders 24 to 8 they're clearly the best team in the nfc at this point in the regular season um one of the better teams in the nfl at this point in the regular season they're just they're playing really great football hard to argue against that uh with the jaguars they're playing really good football right uh 24 0 win versus the colts 38 to 10 win versus the chargers can't really knock what's going on doug peterson has these guys playing great football lawrence seems to have taken a step forward this year you got to really like what you're seeing from the jaguars and you got to like the fact that they're like competitive again so um though i don't have them winning this game i have them staying in it 28 24 uh i think the eagles are just way too good right now uh, another game that no one really cares about. It's the New York Jets taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, both teams are one and two. Both teams coming off a loss. Uh, the Jets, I feel like a lot of people kind of overrated them at the start of the season because they played like that one good comeback win versus the Browns. That was a fluke win. And it's like, guys, they're not that good. Just just a small reminder. Even if Zach Wilson plays in this, I still have the Steelers. Their, their defense should be able to hold off whatever kind of offense the Jets have. And I think that the Steelers offense as we've seen versus the browns could put up at least you know 17 to 25 points um if they're not playing a defense as good as cleveland so uh give me the steelers in a uh, boring game that nobody but steelers or jets fans will watch four o'clock games uh ugh. the arizona cardinals take on the carolina panthers panthers are one and a half point favorites with an over under a 43 that's kind of a surprising one i didn't expect the panthers to be favored i guess when you're at home and the cardinals have been playing kind of crappy easy to see I, I i guess to see why they picked the panthers i don't i don't know um you know uh panthers got their first win of the season so that's good i'm gonna go um regardless with the cardinals in this one uh I haven't really liked the way that the Panthers have played. They've been kind of lucky. To, they were seemed lucky to get that win that they were playing a very banged up Saints team. If they put that effort force uh, forward versus any other team, it doesn't seem like they win that game. So they could be 0 3 if they had faced a really healthy Saints team. Whereas the Sa whereas the Cardinals just feel like they're kind of like treading water. It, like they're like sometimes they look good, sometimes they look bad. It's just they've also played some really good teams. They just played the Super Bowl champions. So it's kind of like. All right, I don't know. I don't care. Who cares? Oh, this game. 
let's just say I have the Packers winning because the Patriots are going to have to start Brian Hoyer or Bailey Zapp, and that's not really fair. So it's pa uh, Patriots versus Packers. It's in Lambeau. Packers are favored by a whole lot because, again, the Patriots do not have Mac Jones. He's out with a uh, high ankle sprain that may need surgery. Kind of unclear right now. Uh, but, yeah, so no Mac Jones in this game for the Patriots equals very low chance at winning. Very, almost improbable. Uh, congrats, Packers. I'm already giving you the W. I, uh, this sucks. Patriots might lose like four straight games because of this. This isn't good. Anyway, uh, the Denver Broncos take on the Los Angeles or the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders are two point favorites with an over under of 45 and a half. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the Raiders. Something seems off. They have way too much talent to be as bad as they've been. So until they start winning games, it's really hard to pick them. And, and again, the Denver offense has been god-awful. But one thing that's been kind of like left off about Denver, they've been pretty good on defense. It's largely why they have this 2-1 record. They've been winning games, like holding teams to like under like 10 points and less. It's pretty crazy. They won like, what, 16-9 to uh, and 11-10. Uh, <laughs> to 11, 11 to 10. So that's, I don't know. I like the way that their defense is been playing and as soon as their offense gets going this is a dangerous broncos team they're way better than the raiders so uh give me the give me the broncos on the road here i just don't trust the raiders at this point in the season they've sh they've given me no reason to think oh that's a good team um i mean they had that comeback versus the titans a game i thought that they'd win uh so uh, until they win i'm not really in the business of picking them against teams that are like capable teams like the broncos could be uh so give me the broncos in that one 17 14 uh, what do we got next? Oh, boy, it's a really good one. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Chiefs are two and a half point favorites with an over under of 45 and a half. Um, I'm pretty sure Chris Godwin almost played in the last game and Mike Evans will be back in this one. So the Buccaneers will be retooled at receivers. Uh, even if they don't have Godwin, they'll have Evans back. Uh, so that's that's going to be big for them because they clearly missed that last week in that embarrassing loss, 14 to 12. Oof. We've already talked about all those other games, so there's no reason to really go over them. We know the Chiefs lost. We know the pay, uh, Buccaneers lost. They're both coming in off losses. Um, usually Tom Brady teams don't play well versus Mahomes teams in the regular season it's kind of like the flip in the playoffs um i don't know I, this is kind of i guess my upset pick of the weekend I, that doesn't really feel like an upset pick um i don't know the x factor the last time these two teams played each other was certainly tyreek hill and uh, and now that they don't have him, I'm wondering if that X factor changes the way this game is played. Especially if God, I might revisit this at the end of the week once we know the full scale of the Bucks' health and the Chiefs' health as well, but mainly the Bucks. Um, but on Saturday we'll probably probably revisit this. But right now I'm like a hundred, I'm like ninety percent positive I'll stay with this. But there's a few things I'm not sure about because if they have Godwin and Evans, Tampa wins this running away. But you know. I want to revisit that one down the road. Uh, this is another one, much like the game where I'm like, I'm just going to look at recent history and see who's won more. Because again, uh, the Rams are two and one and the 49ers are one and two. I've seen much worse San Francisco 49ers teams beat much hotter started for Rams teams. It's very odd. Kyle Shanahan has a crazy like... He just doesn't seem to lose to Sean McVay. Uh, I think they're from the same coaching tree. I think McVay got a start, so it's kind of like, you know, he kind of understands how McVay thinks. Uh, I mean, even the line suggests that the 49ers are probably winning this game. It's at home, major coaching advantage. They've won with a lot. They've won with, like, Nick Mullins at quarterback versus the Rams. So, or, uh, yeah, Nick Mullins or whatever his name was. <laughs> Nate Mullen? I don't know. Nate Sudfeld? Guys like that were beating the Rams for the 49ers. Um... Again, much worse 49ers teams have beaten much like hotter looking Rams teams uh, at the start of the season than or during the season than what we see now. The Rams have been playing kind of like just get it done ball, and I don't really think that's a good idea against a team that has had your number over the years. All right, like I said, my pick'em's not been the greatest. Seven and nine last week, twenty twenty seven and one this week. Uh, sheesh. Not good, not good. Hopefully we improve this week. Hopefully we have a uh, double-digit win week and kind of start erasing some of that uh, sub-500 record. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the week. I appreciate you guys so much for listening. Try to keep these under 25 minutes. That's always the goal.
and we were able to do that this week again uh if you're still listening i appreciate it uh go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below i got you again with the youtube stuff yeah ha, ha, ha. but anyway should be a good week of football uh thank you again so much for everyone who's left likes subscribed left comments and everything it's really helping the channel out we're growing pretty quick again uh we might even hit the 8k at the by the end of the year you never know i kind of doubt it but i mean i mean you'll never know uh anyway Week four, pick them down the drain. Now we have to wait in a few days to see how Thursday night and then so on and so forth goes. I guess my best advice to you right now would be to just fade me. I don't know. <laughs> if you think there's a really close game, fade it. If we both agree on a game, you know, go go with it. But like if we if we disagree, probably go with your gut on that one. It's probably a good idea. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Have a good rest of your day, night, morning, mid-afternoon, mid-morning, mid-evening, whatever you call it um thank you so much for listening uh have a great you know just in general have a good one and uh go lions go tigers and of course it's always go patriots even without mac jones um yeah well thank you so thank you bye bye